Hind. Okay. Now let's move on to point five according to the textbook. The formation of involucrum. Now what is this involucrum? It is nothing but newborn. Okay. What happens? It will encase this necrosed bone. Okay. So it is the encasing sheath around the necrosed bone. So around the necrosed bone, there is an encasing sheath. Okay. This is the uh, involucrum. Okay. The thing is, this is formation of new bone. Okay. Beneath the periosteum. So beneath the periosteum or inside the it you can say there is formation of new bone over the infected bone. Okay. Formation of new bone over the infected bone. So this is the encasing sheath around the necrosed bone. So we are calling it as involucrum. Okay. So it is an encasing sheath around the necrosed bone. Necrosed bone is what? Sequestrum. Correct. So this involucrum, how does it happen? Because there is new bone formation over the infected bone. Okay. There can still be sinus tracts. Sinus tracts can be present. Okay. So this involucrum has irregular surface and the sinus tracts can pass through these perforations. Irregular surface will be there for this involucrum and sinus tracts can be present through the perforations. Okay. So the, there will still be drainage of pus etc. Now then what happens? Neoosteogenesis. Okay. Long continued neoosteogenesis. There will be dense sclerotic pattern of osteomyelitis called as chronic sclerosing non suppurative osteomyelitis of Gary. This is chronic sclerosing non suppurative osteomyelitis of Gary. Always spelling first Gary. Okay. Next, let's go to the next point. Maybe it will become clear then. Occasionally, acute osteomyelitis may be contained to a localized area and walled off by fibrous tissue and granulation tissue. This is termed as Brody's abscess. Okay. So, what is uh, in acute osteomyelitis? The entire infection, you know, it will be local and there will be fibrous tissue and granulation tissue surrounding it there will be no sinus you can't know only this is called as broadly sepsis which is a very good thing right are you able to understand guys there can be broadies abscess this is a good thing right because it is just going to wall off wall off the localized area by fibrous tissue and granulation tissue. So this is good. You won't even know there is infection. Okay. But in sequestrum, it is only the necrosed uh, tissue. Okay. It is not going to have any uh, uh, wall off. Osteom in a broadly sepsis, there is a wall off. What is involucrum? Involucrum is around the sequestrum. But it has perforations which will allow sinus drainage. How sad. So, involucrum is not that great. What do you say? We'll make it yellow. But this um, broadly sepsis is kind of good. It will wall it off. Is that clear, guys? It's not very difficult, right? Okay, great. The last point, guys, don't worry. Last point in this video. Vertebral pyogenic osteomyelitis. In vertebral pyogenic osteomyelitis, infection begins from the disc and spreads to involve vertebral bodies. Don't worry, guys. Not very difficult. Vertebral pyogenic osteomyelitis. That is, if there is a pyogenic osteomyelitis in vertebral column, First disc 
discitis happens. Okay, first discitis, then vertebral bodies are involved. That's all, that's all, that's all. Don't worry. Okay, let's revise quickly what we have seen in this. Actually, we are looking at the, the morphology of pyogenic osteomyelitis. What happens is, first of all, in the metaphyseal ends, uh, in the marrow cavity, in the metaphyseal ends, pus will be there. Then the uh, the pressure, the tension in this marrow cavity increases. The endosteum gets involved. In the Haversian and the Volksmann canal in the compact bone, they get involved. Then the periosteitis gets involved. Okay, periosteum gets involved. Now, the subperitone uh, periosteal abscess can be there. And there can be draining tracts from the skin. Okay. Now, sequestrum is nothing but the infarction necrosis of the cortex. You have to write this word. Infarction necrosis of the cortex. Because of suppuration and impaired blood supply, the cortex will get eroded and it will become thin. Necrosis of the cortex. Sequestrum. Necrosis of the cortex. Sequestrum. Necrosis of the cortex of the bone. Sequestrum. Then, inval look. Rum is nothing but an encasing sheath around this necrosed bone. So, there is formation of new bone over the infected bone. However, there is it is going to have an irregular surface and there will be perforations through which the sinus tracts can pass through. Then you have neo-osteogenesis. Uh, not much clear on that. Then acute osteomyelitis, sometimes there can be a brodys patch, abscess, brodys abscess, which will actually, the abscess will be inside and it is completely walled off, okay, because of fibrous tissue and granulation tissue. In vertebral column, if uh, pyogenic uh, osteomyelitis is there, then the first there will be discitis and then the vertebral bodies get involved. Okay, that's all for now. See you. Bye-bye.